Okay, in this video, we're going to use ICA to identify and remove artifacts from our uh, EEG data. Actually, it's EPIC EEG data at this point. Uh, but we have artifacts from eye blinks, maybe some channel noise, etc. We want to identify those and remove those to clean up our data set. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to Tools, and we're going to decompose the data by ICA. As you can see, before I run this, I'll show you the ICA weights. It says no. Well, the first thing we have to do is, is basically compute the ICA weights, or independent components analysis is what ICA means. And so we're going to do that. We're going to click on this. You'll get this, oops, you'll get this um, pop-up window. I'll bring it down so you can see it. Uh, you're just going to run IC. You're going to click OK. Uh, and now it's running, and you can see you could stop it. And each of the steps, it's presenting to you a learning rate. Sometimes it'll readjust, and it'll keep running. This is going to have to run for a while. It'll be like 300 and some odd steps. Uh, so I'm going to pause the recording, and then when the recording is done, I will uh, take you through the next steps. Okay, so the ICA is done running, and you'll see over here in the command window, uh, we got up to 321, and you see the learning rate gets really, really low. That's when you know it's getting close to being done, but it's done when it says done down here at the bottom, and also the ICA weights will now say yes. So at this point, what I want you to do is go ahead and save the current data set, uh, because that will save the ICA weights. A lot of times, we, if we have to go back and reprocess some data, it's generally to this step where where we're removing artifacts. So if you save it here, we won't have to rerun ICA and save that uh, time that it takes to compute it. So now the next step, what you want to do is use, go to Tools. And we're going to use IC Label. That's a artificial intelligence that will look at our ICA components and tell us what it thinks is contributing to those components. And we just click on Label Components. And you'll have the default recommended. You click OK. And it's going to come up with another window, and you're just going to click OK. And then we're going to get an output window that has maps of our ICA components. And the map, as you will see, has a number uh, and what IC label thinks it is and a percentage associated with that, confidence associated with that. So what I want you to do is go through and inspect these and see if you agree with IC label's um, determination here and keep some and reject others. What we're going to do is keep the ones that are brain, reject the others that are other sources of artifact, like ocular activity or uh, some kind of weird movement or channel noise, that kind of thing. So we're going to go through and look at some of these um, components. I'll just click on the first one. And there's some examples in uh, your uh, protocol, as well as you practice labeling. Um, so hopefully we'll get some experience with this. But we can see here that this the activity is coming from mostly the ocular channels. And you can get a scrolling activity here and see that that looks like classic ocular activity here, for example, um, and down here. So that's a pretty clear ocular activity. Let's look at four and sort of see what's going on here with four. Um, so you can see the distribution, you can see the power spectrum here, it's pretty low frequency kinds of things, and it's distributed all across all of our trials. So this plot down here plots the ERP for this component, and over time, and then the power band, so if it's a darker, or, or sorry, if it's a redder color, there's a greater power uh, over time, it tells you where it's happening. So this is happening all over the place and across many trials. Um, and it's got it split between, IC label has it split between 40 and 40, so that's a, an artifact that you can take out. So what I'm going to do is I'll write down all of these. I just would verify that indeed it looks like ocular activity here. Oh, I'll bring it down so you can see. And you can scroll through and you can sort of see that. So I'm going to take out components 1 through 5 because they're all ocular activity or something else. And then let's look at a brain component just so you can see what a brain component looks like. So here's its distribution, here's the ERP for it, and you can see that this is a nice scattered sort of um, uh, plot that you would expect for an ERP across a lot of um, trials, not just, a lot of times artifact will show up, it's just one clear band and the rest of the time it's not there. Um, so that's good one brain, Here, I'll show you another one, we'll look at seven. We'll keep seven, that looks like a pretty good ERP there, again the plots, and you can see where it's coming from. It's not coming from this ocular channels, for example, or the eye channels. 
So let's look at eight for other. And here's a good example of some data, some, some kind of artifact that happened only in a brief, small segment of trials. And you can see it's right around maybe like 105 to 110, somewhere in that neighborhood. So let's go in the scroll and sort of see if we can find that. So here's the epics up here. So we're gonna scroll up to like 110 or so and, and take a look at like what's going on there and see if we can identify what's happening with this up. So here you go. So right at 118, you can see that it looks like electrode drift. Uh, that's what I would call electrode drift for just a handful of trials. So we're definitely gonna take that out and it's classifying it as other. I agree that that's artifact, so it's not ERP. So we're gonna get rid of that. We'll pull that out. So I'm gonna write down on my piece of paper. Do you have a place to write down uh, which um, labels you remove, or which components you remove when you're processing. And I can go back and look at it if I need to, if there's something at issue with that data, or uh, I wanna uh, reprocess it just to make sure that it's, that it's accurate. So I processed this one before. The only other one, the only other component I removed was 15. So I'm gonna pull out 15, and we'll take a look at 15. 15 is also being, uh, it's a little split between brain and other, but you can see where it's localizing here out on the ocular electrodes. So the other thing I want to point out to you is that the further you get with our components, so this is component 15, you can see that uh, the percent of scalp data variance accounted for is only 1%. So it's only 1% of the data, and that continues. The further you go out, the less percentage of data we're talking about. It displays the components based on how much data they, um, they represent. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one out, and if you click on one just for a comparison, you can see that that is accounting for 34% of the variance. So a big difference there. So I usually look at the first three rows pretty carefully and we take out stuff that's um, not brain, uh, that's artifacting these first three rows. I'm less concerned about these last rows here because we're talking about a much smaller percentage of data. So generally it won't have much of an impact on uh, your data processing. So I'm gonna take out those components. So it's one through five, uh, eight, and 15. So we've mapped those, so now let's remove them. So we go to tools, remove components from data, and we get this window. And so we're gonna list each component. You're gonna put a little space in between it. So one, two, three, four, five, and then eight, and then 15. And you're gonna click okay. It's gonna say, hey, do you wanna accept that you're removing these? Yes, we do. Now it's asking you to save it, and we're gonna overwrite it, and we're gonna paste it in here and we're going to do ICA because we've cleaned it up with ICA. We're going to save that and we're done with this individual step. Now what we'll do in the next video is we're going to uh, make sure that we've removed some art all the artifacts and we're going to use ERP Labs art automatic artifact detection in the next video.